I'm going to tell you everything you want to know about the new 2949 Origin 350R, and we're starting right now. And she looks at me and she says, I need about 350. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing the features, functions and benefits of the Origin 350R. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. We'll cover a brief overview, take a look at the exterior and the interior, review stack comparisons, go over weapons, discuss components, review available customization packages, look over pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the ship being reviewed. If this is our first time meeting, be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Now let's get to it. The 300 series is the ultimate fusion of elegance and power. Every component, every part is individually calibrated so no matter which model and options you choose, your ship will stay in perfect harmony as the ultimate in astroengineering. By far the fastest member of the family, the 350R, refocuses all of your 300 series power and translates it into pure speed. The 350R is manufactured by Origin Jumpworks, a Terra-based spaceship and engine manufacturer of high quality and luxury products. The 350R is the racing variant of the 300 series. The 300i, 315p, and 325a are also available. Check the description and end screen for my reviews on those. The 350R is currently flight ready. As of today, it is available for purchase or upgrade on the pledge store from $125 and on average sells for $140 on the gray market. It is not currently available to purchase with Alpha UEC. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the new 2949 Origin 350R. The standard 350R features a black and yellow paint job. However, I have chosen the Origin Celebration Solar Flare color scheme. On the nose, you have the size 4 M5A laser autocannon and its distinct 300 series LED headlights. On the roof, you'll notice the dual engine scoops exclusive to the 350R package. On the wings, you will notice its retro thrusters. Under the wings, we have our shredder ballistic cannons and one size one strike force two. Around the rear, we have our main thrusters for both of the 350R's engines. Underneath the rear, we have a cargo bay with 4 SCU of cargo space. Now for the interior. To the left, we have the cockpit. You'll notice the red and carbon fiber trim. This is customizable in the pledge store. You'll also notice the upgraded sports seat and racing wheel that comes standard with a 350R. The pilot seat features four MFDs and a radar. However, the radar is not visible due to a bug. The 300 series does come equipped with an ejection feature. Behind us, we have a head. Unique to the 350R, we lose the amenities found in the rest of the 300 series, and we just have a single bed in the rear. This bed can be sat on or laid in. Now let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected the following 10 ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. If this is your first time here, you may want to check the Google Sheet or pause the screen. It explains how I have selected and compared the ships. This comparison is of the base model 350R. Check the Google Sheet to see how the other available customization package compares. The 350R comes in at around 64,000 kilograms. It has a max crew size of one, has a cargo capacity of four SCU. It has just over 3,000 hit points across its body. This was nerfed in 3.5.1 to better suit a racing ship. Its shield ties fourth place with most ships in this list and can withstand just under 6,500 hit points of damage. Has a sustained gun DPS of just over a thousand, it takes third here. It also comes in third with a burst DPS of over 1200. Has a combined missile payload of over 1700 and it ranks second. It has a fuel capacity of over 52,000 fuel units. 
It has a max shot pitch rate of 69 degrees per second. It gets beat by the Razor series here pretty bad. Its SCM speed of 258 meters per second takes first place. And its top speed of 1347 is second only to the Drake Herald, but it is the fastest of the racing ships. Its quantum drive has a 46 megameter per second quantum speed. The 350R ties in second place here with seven other ships on this list. So travel from Port Alizar to Arcorp will take you about 15 minutes and 13 seconds. Its QT range of 60 gigameters takes fourth, so it can travel from Port Alizar to Arcorp 1.5 times before needing to refuel. Now let's talk about its firepower. The default 350R comes with two size 3 weapon hardpoints on the wings and one size 3 hardpoint on the nose. On the wings we have two SW16 BR3 Shredder ballistic repeaters each. One Shredder is size 3, has 112 physical damage with 240 RPM for a total of 448 DPS and a 2700 meter range. On the nose, it has one M5A laser autocannon. One M5A is size 3, does 318 energy damage with 65 RPM for a total of 345 DPS and a 3500 meter range. For missiles, it has two MSD-212 missile racks with two Strike Force 2s each. Strike Force 2s are size 2, are cross-section, have 874 mix damage, a 2.68 second lock time, and a 4800 meter lock range. Now for the components. The standard components available on the 350R are as follows. It has one size 1 EOS quantum drive with a 46 megameter per second quantum speed, and a 10 second cooldown. It has one size 1 sun flare power plant with over 2300 max power generation per second, two size 1 quick cool coolers that provide 160,000 max cooling per second each, and last but not least we have two size 1 target shield generators with over 3200 capacity each. Let's talk about the customization. To see all of the 350R customization options including color, trim, and weapons packages add the guide here to your watch later list. We'll get straight to the point here. The 350R has just one additional package available to purchase. Here's what you need to know. With the SP package for an extra $22 you get 11% more shield capacity, 82% more sustained, and 57% more burst DPS. No additional missile payload a 24% more gain in quantum speed, a 3% quantum range loss, 39% more max power generation per second, and a hefty 137% more cooling per second. And if you purchase these components in game right now, it will cost you around 154,000 Alpha UEC. I think this is a great package, but keep in mind that 150k is an evening's worth of playing the game at most, and these weapons and components will now persist after death. I would say its pros are its SCM speed, it is the best in the game so far. Its max speed of course, and unlike every other racing ship, you can sleep in it and poop in it, hopefully not in that order. Its 4 SCU of cargo space can certainly come in handy, and its acceleration is great. Unfortunately the community has not come up with a way to measure this in the game file since the new flight model, so I am unable to compare this to other racing ships with any certainty. Its cons are its max draw pitch rate is subpar compared to its competitor, the Razor series. Also the price. Is it just me or is $125 too much for a racing ship? Let me know what you think down in the comments. The HP nerf hurts. It brings it in line with the Razor series, but I think it was brought down a little too low. However, I still can't fault it for this because the Mustang Gamma is the only racing ship with more HP. Of course, its DPS and missile payload are low, but that's to be expected for a racing ship, so I won't add this to this list. So my thoughts. The 350R is a great racing ship in my opinion. It is the best I've seen so far. I can't wait to get my hands on the Razor series though. With it being a sixth of the weight, the acceleration has to be amazing. What really sets the 350R apart from the other racers is its versatility. It has a bed, four SCU of space, a cabin, and a place for mission boxes and friends. However, I don't recommend this for the only fighter in the fleet. If you have a fighter already and you would like to dabble in racing, this should be a good way to go. If you have a large fleet with fighters, cargo haulers, explorers, etc., the Razor series may be worth a look. Those are my thoughts, what are yours? Let's continue this conversation down in the comments. 
The next ship in my review series will be voted on you guys in the community with this update I posted on my channel. Hurry up and place your vote. I will need to get started on it as soon as possible. Did you like this review? Like it. Subscribe by clicking the circle here. Check out some of my other reviews in this series here. And if you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel further, check the description for ways to do so. However, your viewership is more than enough. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.